Hey everyone, there was a couple of interesting stories last week. Syrian terrorist Shamima Begum was trying to gain sympathy and a council flat in Britain by talking about the death of her friends and family, which is a bit like Rosemary West claiming that she really misses getting to chat with the lodgers. Talking of murderers, a psychic medium claims to have located Madeleine McCann six miles from the villa in a forest using psychic powers or something like that, clearly upsetting news for the family, but a nice little surprise for the police who get to fly up to the Algarve this summer. And news from the world of sport, apparently Gareth Southgate's been saying that the England team are going to be kneeling before matches this summer to show solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. Apparently they're quote more determined than ever to ignore any boos from the stands. There's obviously a joke in there about why the fans would be booing that rather than a dismal performance at season going out on penalties, but at least it makes a change from the old days when the boos that people were concerned with were the cases of boos being delivered to Paul Gascoigne's hotel room the night before the quarterfinals. Main news story though, it's been a couple of weeks since we last discussed COVID, although there have been a number of smaller related stories, of course, my favourite being that Dracula's Castle in Romania has been offering tourists vaccines, presumably asking them to close their eyes, relax and offer up a delicious vein. And I'm not sure if Dracula himself ever got COVID, but either way, beware of the coffin. Coughing? Coffin? Anyway, there's been a growing consensus that the COVID virus escaped from the laboratory up the road from the wet market. This, of course, is a theory that was seemingly obvious to anyone with half a brain cell last year, although the news media reported it as a despicable and racist trope because Donald Trump mentioned it once. It has, however, been taken seriously now because Joe Biden's being told to say it by whoever it is that tells him what to say through that earpiece. It's one of many stories where the narrative is completely changed like that. The cages situation on the Mexican border, that's still as bad as it ever was. There's still kids being locked up, but now it's Joe Biden overseeing it, so it's no longer offensive. Anyway, the most recent batch of COVID proof stems from a recent research paper showing that the virus has four positively charged amino acids in this spike, and that's a development that couldn't have possibly happened naturally. At this point, of course, the question is, who knew it and when did they know it? Newly leaked emails show that at the start of the outbreak, California virologist Christian Anderson told Anthony Fauci that COVID-19 looks, quote, potentially engineered and, quote, inconsistent with expectations from evolutionary theory. But then a couple of weeks later, he completely changed his mind, published a natural origin paper, and then received a multi-million dollar grant from the US government. He also just deleted more than 5,000 tweets his entire Twitter history prior to March 2020. I wonder what he knew. It also turns out that several Western countries were involved in funding the gain-of-function research at the laboratory in question. I wonder what they knew and when they knew it. For me, the main question has always been how Moderna was able to design the sequence for their COVID vaccine just two days after the Chinese officials released the genetic sequence. That was in January 2020, and the patent, something that nearly takes nearly a year to assemble, was filed less than two months later. I wonder what they knew, and really importantly, when they knew it. You know, there's an old expression about how it's not the crime but the cover-up, but to be honest, I think the actual conspiracy is a lot less calculated and a lot more cynical. The US government funded corona research in China, we know that, and they probably knew what was going on. They probably also assumed that at some point lots of people would die, except they probably figured it would only be several thousands, not millions, and they probably thought it would all be in China, not Virginia or Boston or somewhere in America. And if the dollar numbers being thrown about are in any way accurate, they actually negotiated a pretty cheap deal for biomedical research, at least until the vaccine escaped and travelled to the West. You know, perhaps the West knew perfectly well from the start what happened, but they simply didn't want to look like they were the bad guys. At this point, I'm waiting for Anthony Fauci to remove his face mask like in Scooby-Doo, and it'll turn out that he owns an old abandoned amusement arcade. All the irony, of course, would be that it was his choice of policies that led to that arcade being closed to the public last summer. Anyway, if there's any good smoking guns you've seen, post them in the comments, and otherwise see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.